going on everyone thank you for coming back to the channel i am toys and this is going to be another one six custom horror review so for those of you who aren't familiar with the channel you know make sure you hit that 4k option and the youtube settings so you get this in all its full glory and as usual make sure you hit the like button if you like the content if you don't like the content hit the dislike button um, we're not hurting any feelings if you uh are, are fragile to this kind of stuff and you get offended by people disliking your video you're probably on the wrong platform <laughs> but anyway this is uh, gonna be another custom 16 horror review again by Beta Metalli and this is the part for Jason and as you can see from the box art you know he's got some cool sayings from the film help help he's killing me he's killing me <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, one of the more interesting kills from the film and uh, but unique in its own right though you know the, the there was actually another movie that did that uh where he said he was killing me and i want to say it might have been jack from from american werewolf in london during that death scene in the beginning but i could be wrong but i know there's another film that also uh coined that term per se uh and who knows, it might not be American Werewolf in London, I could be wrong, it might be another one, and there may have been other films who have done that as well, but um, there are two in particular that stand out to me. This one, and I think Jack said, but I, I, I might be wrong, but there's another film too that was pretty well known for that. Uh, but anyway, you know, like you see, you've got some cool box art, and, and, and I know Beto is processing the idea of potentially just doing like a standard box art instead of something more unique like these. Obviously, it takes a little bit of work and sometimes probably tedious and time-consuming to come up with new box art for every release, but um, it really does give us some finesse and something unique to each release, though. So um, I hope he doesn't get rid of it, but hey, you never know. Uh, where the hell is the corkscrew? <laughs> Another awesome kill. <laughs> Kristen Glover, man, uh, you just can't go wrong with that guy. One of the most eccentric characters, and one of the uh, one of the most unique parts of that film too. And we'll talk about some of that later. Um, but overall, yeah, this is what the review is going to be. Uh, there's lots of cool things about this movie, and we'll we'll get into some of the nuances of that. You know, like we like I normally do, because you got to be able to talk about the movie you know, um, with the figure, because, you know, again, these two just go uh, to bed, they're bedfellows, you know, they, they just go together, uh, two peas in a pod, right? Um, so other than that, you know, I hope you enjoy the reveal, let's get into it, and I will see you on the other side. All right, guys, so as you see this getting panned around, you're gonna get some perspective shots of the front, the side profiles, the rear, and everything is done well. I mean, Lupita on the tailoring again did a good job on the pants, I mean, there's weathering there, um, which you cannot see very well depending on the lighting. You know, those are one of the gripes that some people will, will, will try to come at it with and say, ah, oh, it's too clean, you know, the shirt color's off. Um, but obviously, you know, depending on the lighting, some of those things will come in more than others. You know, when I get in close, you might be able to see more of that, um, hopefully. But again, it, it's more of a lighter weathering. And, you know, those are probably some of the gripes that some people may have. They're going to say, oh, it's too clean or the shirt color's off. But like I've always said, you know, do you want off-screen reference or do you want how it looks in the film? Um, and in the film, it's usually pretty dark. Um, again, it, there's all kinds of color grading that that's applied to these things. Um, the way it's shot. Uh, I mean, there's so many different factors. So, and Beto is on the money when it comes to kind of attention to detail. So... Um, I would imagine this is probably the color of the shirt it should have been. I mean, when, when, you, when you see him in the beginning and he's laying on the, uh, um, in the barn and he's carted off and put in the ambulance, um, this that looks like the shirt color, you know, the, the, that, that he's wearing when he's getting pulled off. So, I mean, it looks pretty accurate to me. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe I'm colorblind. <laughs> but anyway, I, I, I think it's, it's pretty on the money. Um, you know... Other things that were really, we'll say, interesting about this film, again, someone else reprised the role of Jason, um, and this guy was Ted White, I believe his name's Ted White, and he was the oldest person to ever play Jason. The guy was 58 years old, man, when he initially played Jason. I think that is the oldest person to ever play uh, Jason actively in a film. 
And um, believe it or not, he was offered the, uh, the chance to be in part five and part six, but he ended up turning it down, which he then later regretted because, you know, no one really understood back then, you know, w what a beast of a franchise that this was going to have and, and the following, you know, all these years later. And he really wished that he would have, you know, stuck with it. But it's all right, man. I mean, uh, n nobody knew. But uh, again, I'm kind of glad he didn't because if he had um, stepped in, um, well, no, that's not entirely true. I was going to say maybe that would have pushed things in a different direction and, and maybe even prevented Kane Hodder from coming into the series at, at, at a certain point. Because when little changes happens, happen, man, little ripples, you know, it's like a lake. You throw a rock in and, and the ripples come out. It almost wonders what kinds of different things might have changed uh, and, and gone a different way. And then we would have never got Kane Hodder as Jason, who is, for in my opinion, the definitive Jason. But anyway, you know, this is more hypothetical, hypothetical speaking. But this dude um, in the film was a really cool guy because he had um, almost the, the, the cast, um, we'll say, safety more in heart than the director did. I mean, the director has to create a film and has to, you know, stick to the deadlines and is trying to get it done. But there was one particular death scene uh, with uh, one of the characters in, in, the, in the lake, in the raft, where it was like 35 degrees outside, basically, when they're filming this thing, man. And, and she was in there uh, uh, probably developing hypothermia. <laughs> and uh, Ted White had said, you know, you know we, we need to get her out of there. You know, she was pretty emotional and she was um, tearful and like, I'm, I'm fucking freezing, you know, basically. And uh, Ted White said, you know, hey, um, I, I need to get her, we need to get her out of there. And, and the director um, was refusing to do it at the time. And um, he, uh, Ted actually threatened to walk and, and leave. Uh, and that, obviously they're like, great, we're not gonna recast, even though some people <laughs> would have probably done that. And um, they got her out. Uh, so the, a lot of those things were somewhat frequent on the set. And he was kind of like a guardian angel, you know, you, you know to a degree. So the dude, was he was well-liked. He was really cool. Uh, there was an interesting kind of dynamic between him and uh, Corey Feldman, too, as well. <laughs> That's also kind of neat. Um, but we'll, we'll, get more into, uh, we'll get more into that, you know, as we, as we zoom in and we talk about some kills and we look at the head sculpt and, and whatnot. So that's really about it. That's all I want to leave you with so far on, on at least that aspect. And I gave you, I think, some pretty good perspective shots of what this thing looks around, looks like from all around. And overall, I think the stature is really good. Um, you know, there uh, we'll, we'll talk about uh, the fact that some people, you know, there are people that do not like the part four for various reasons. But I have to say that up close in hand and posed right, this thing is pretty damn fantastic. So anyway, let's move on and get it closer on the fig and show you the close-ups. So here are some close-up shots first as we uh, we pan this guy. And we'll start with kind of the bottom. And as you can see, this is a base by uh, Alex Robles. And um, uh, I believe this is all done by him. You know, you can see the wooded kind of, uh, you know, uh, dock, you know, looking um, kind of platform that, that he has on. And um, awesome detail as usual. You know, Alex is also another um, all-star out there, you know, just like uh, Paul Manzi over at Distress Labs as far as what he's able to do with these dios. Uh, really excellent work. You know, you get some of that dirt and, uh, and kind of moss feel on the front there as well. And then he has that little plaque there at the bottom that says Friday the 13th, the final chapter. So that's nice. And that is all wood too around that, I believe. And uh, just excellent, dude. And, uh, you know, there's some weathering, as you can see on the shoes. These are all either hand sculpted or 3D printed and then kind of refined with the with sculpting, you know, after that. And as you can see, mine, mine appear to be a little bit more weathered than some of the others. Some of them are a little cleaner. Uh, mine seem to have a little bit more weathering or it could, it could just be pics or, you know, other videos or whatnot. Um, but they look to have a little bit more weathering on them. But who knows? Could be wrong. And as we go up on the pants, you can see that there is some uh, weathering on the pants as we zoom in. And I'm out of freaking focus. There we go. <laughs> and you can see there is weathering on those pants. They are a little dirtier. And uh, I don't know if it's all coming through. You know, obviously some parts of the figure are darker than others. But there is weathering on the fig. And there is even weathering on the shirt as well. But it doesn't come through as well. It depends on the lighting. There's a pic that I took 
that I haven't necessarily uh, put up on Instagram yet, but I have it in some of the Facebook groups. So those of you who have seen that already probably already saw it and were like, oh wow, this really does look weathered. But I don't have uh, that photo up on my Instagram just yet. So I'll, I'll put it up there, same handle, and you'll be able to check that out to see what I'm talking about. Uh, but it doesn't show up as much here, but you can see there are some dirty spots. Like if you look at the shirt, you can see there's a little bit of discoloration in there. So it is there. And even on the pocket, like I don't know if zooming up helps. You might be able to see some of it. I think some of that is coming through. And then around the zippers too as well, going down. There is weathering on there. You know, so Beto did uh, put it in. It just doesn't come out as deeply, but depending on how you light it, man, it does come out well. I took a really good pick of it. You guys can check that out. But Lupita did a good job. Uh, there's been some discussion that there's some variation between the outfits. I don't know how true that is because I haven't seen any other ones up close. But decent job. And like I said, do you want the shirts looking uh, off reference, you know, to the film or film reference? You know, um, and honestly, he looked, this is the color of the shirt in, in the beginning of the film. Uh, it does look darker later on because, you know, it does, it's obviously filmed in the dark and the rain most of the time. So, <laughs> so it's going to look darker. And then as we go up to the head sculpt too, I think that mask is pretty on, you know, so I'm sorry for the little bit of the shake here, but like, like I said, I think the mask is pretty much on, uh, to the film. Hopefully, uh, those comparison shots are kind of hammering it through. Obviously there's going to be some differences, but I think overall it's a pretty good job. You know, good detail, good paint app. You know, that hammer, that handle is, as I go out of focus again, <laughs> try to get back in focus. So I'm trying to get a handle on that, on that hammer. There we go. Uh, that is a resin blade, but the handle is wooden. So just in case anyone was wondering. And then I'm gonna give you guys some overhead or under, under shots to this guy to get some perspectives. Some perspective looks. Actually, I lied. So <laughs> let's show you the second head sculpt too up close first. So as you can see from this guy, the uh, paint application is pretty damn good. Sorry for the shake there if it's shaking. Um, but the blood work is really good. You know, uh, in some of the reviews, um, some people are some people have mentioned that the paint applications on the new head sculpts are a little bit different uh, than the previous. Um, I, I, again, I haven't seen it up close, so I'm, I'm not really sure what that looks like, but overall, I think the, uh, the sculpt on this is, the paint is fantastic. I mean, the sculpt is great. One of the awesome things about this head sculpt, it was essentially based on Savini's makeup that he did in, uh, in part one, you know, at the end when he pops out of the lake and he had no say, basically, uh, he didn't have any input on this. He actually mentioned this in some interviews where he was talking about how they, you know, they, they, they took his look from the very part, the, the first part, you know, the kid Jason, when he comes out of the lake and they molded essentially, you know, developed this makeup and sculpted it based on that. Like what would this head sculpt or this, uh, his face look like, you know, based on that as he got older. So that's one of the amazing pivotal reasons why this freaking figure is fantastic because they really did carry that through from the first film. And even Savini himself said they did it a fucking amazing job, an amazing job. So, you know, Beto did a great job on the blood work and the overall paint application is sick, you know, but that's one of the pivotal reasons, again, why I love this figure and why I love this rendition of part four. You know, it's, it's a must have if you're a Jason fan because it's pivotal historically, like I said, based on, on, on what I described there. So as you can see, man, it, it's, uh, it's, it's really fucking good, dude. And if there are differences between this version and the, uh, and the, um, the new run, I, I don't know what they are. Again, I can't speak to it. I don't have it. So, but people said they have noticed, but the paint application on this is, is, is deep. It's, uh, very detailed and just, it's excellent. So, um, I don't, I, I'm not, I'm not asking for any more from this. I mean, I think it looks good and, uh, I'm going to show you something I didn't show you as much, uh, briefly the, uh, the split hand. So as you can see here, the, uh, the hand itself is, this is when he gets hit with the machete. Really good paint application on that. And that looks good as well. So hopefully the details coming through on that good paint app. And then this is the, uh, his machete that comes with it. And obviously the machete, um, is a little bit bloodied. From what I understand, some of the machetes didn't have blood on it though. Um, and that is a wooden handle, I believe. And the blade is actually real metal. 
So I think that's all I wanted to kind of show you on this. And maybe since I'm already here, some close-ups on the on the dock, you know, the wood there, the paint. Really good, man. Like I said, Robles is up there with the All-Stars, man. Like the Stress Labs. Just excellent work. Would have been nice if you did a full diorama, you know, like Paul is doing right now for the ones run, but it's all good though. And again, that makeup, man. Oh, that's so good. I love it that they they went off of the uh, the part one look from the kid Jason. That's just awesome that they did that. Absolutely awesome. And Savini loved it. It would have been nice if Savini had a hand in that, but who knows what he would have done if he had the choice. But really, really awesome that they did that. So, all right guys, now I'm gonna show you some perspective looks from under and then above. And then we will move on from there as well. So as promised, you know, some under uh, underneath shots to give you some of that perspective. Because again, it's nice to see some of these shots because, you know, you may have them displayed on the bottom shelf, the top shelf. And again, just gives you kind of uh, the dynamic of what this guy looks like, you know, from uh, all sides, man. I like doing that for you guys because, again, I think it overall just... Uh, it does the piece justice, you know, in general. So this is some nice underneath shots. And I don't know if you guys uh, remember, you know, um, Crispin Glover's character, Mr. Deadfuck, <laughs> and his buddy. Um, but the cool thing about their lines, man, like everything was basically, you know, improv. They improv a lot of that, that whole dead fuck scene. <laughs> that was one of the best parts, man. I had that clip in the beginning of the video. And uh, definitely one of the best parts of, uh, of the film, man. And that was all improv. The director kind of let them do their thing. And that was hilarious, man. And of course, Crispin got one of the, the coolest uh, deaths in the film. Hey, where's the corkscrew? love it man he got one of the best deaths dude one of the best that's for sure so those are the underneath shots let me give you some overhead kind of uh, perspective as well so as promised some aerial shots because I'm a pilot <laughs> I'm an idiot uh, but anyway like I said I want to give you some aerial shots to get a look at this guy his perspective matters Mother flowers. <laughs> but as you can see, man, looks good, man. Like I said, Beto is good at what he does. Wants customs, man. They dominate the horror genre. And then those of you who probably like, you know, I so, saw, you know, another thing I'd like to always add is that, you know, this is the reason why, you know, I love being versatile, doing different reviews of different things, you know, because. The nice thing about this is people could say, oh, well, you guys are official reviewers, you know, for, for one's custom pieces. So, you know, if you, do, if you guys do comparisons or reviews of other Beto figures or other people's pieces, how do we know you're going to be, you know, unbiased? And obviously, you guys have seen from my videos, um, I am unbiased for the most part. You don't see me saying that one is the winner, you know, over anybody else. You know, I try to keep it pretty, pretty balanced and talk about where strengths are, where certain weaknesses are. And um, that's the way things usually go. You know, it's okay to have, you know, some weaknesses as an artist or some things that you excel at and then other things that you don't. It's all right, you know. So, so hopefully I give you some good aerial shots, kind of perspective of what this guy looks like from up top. And now I'm going to show you the, this sculpt unmasked yes unmasked so here's a far out shot of this sculpt and as we go in wow man like I said you can see as I flash up some of the pics here 
the sculpt work, man, you can tell they did their due diligence in studying the Kid Jason version of kind of what uh, Savini was working with. And really nailed it, dude. I mean, I mean, I mean, now that you see it, it's like, yeah, obviously that's a rework of that. But if Savini had done it, it makes you wonder what it would have looked like. Would it have been similar? You know, would he have gone with that? But like I said, even Savini said that he was very happy with it. He thought it looked awesome. He thought it looked absolutely awesome. And the details all around the sculpt, like I like I was saying, obviously look. Pretty damn good, man. The paint application is good. So if the paint app is different from the uh, from the new version, you know I wouldn't be able to tell you if that's true again. But this is still pretty damn good. So if you guys who have the newer version have an even better paint application, then then shit, that's good for you guys. <laughs> But it just looks really good, man. And then kind of backing out a little bit. So I'm sorry if this is shaking it at all. Just to give you that perspective. Overall, it looks very, very good. So that's that head sculpt. And obviously, I'm going to show you the... Uh, the other one, the other bad boy over here. And of course I'll put the machete in his head. Can't not do that, right? One last look at this guy up close. And make sure you guys, again, you know, hit the like button, hit the dislike button if you don't like the video. It's all good either way, like I always say. And um, tell me about what your favorite kills are, man because a lot of them are probably mine as well. <laughs> oh man, they, they are definitely good. Shower scene, shower death kill, or death scene was also pretty badass. We all remember that one. <laughs> oh man, they, 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 uh, they get better with every movie, man. They really do. All right, let's show you that other. Uh, let's show you that other head, and there he is with the further battle damage head. <laughs> uh, this is the head that has the um, the machete indentation in the side of the sculpt. And I'll try to go over on this side while shaking the damn camera too much because my stabilizer is kind of broken, <laughs> as you can see. that better focus there you go you see the indentation blood work is good man it's nice and wet looks like it's fresh like it should and uh good paint work all around man this is one of the killer scene man whack <laughs> As you can see, that is awesome. That is one of the coolest parts in the movie, man, because you see him unmasked, which does become more rare as the films go on. Part eight is probably the last time that you see him unmasked. You don't see him unmasked ever again um, after that. Well, in a remake, technically you do, but in Jason uh, Goes to Hell, nope. Uh, you don't see him unmasked in, uh, what the heck is it? Um, and Jason X either remake you do but part nine was the last time so it's not like it became that much more rare I guess because technically you do see him uh, unmasked I guess it's only two films technically ten and, uh, and nine I guess really so I guess it's not that many but yeah it is what it is right <laughs> And again, like I said, this makeup is based on, uh, you know, the part one makeup of the young kid Jason. And overall, man, good stuff. So let me show you the uh, machete in the head, as promised. So here he goes with the machete in the face. 
<laughs> oh, that was it. That's a pretty cool death scene, man. And uh, uh, again, one of the times that you get to see, you know, Jason unmasked. Sorry about some of the shake here. Um, but, you know, awesome scene, dude. And uh, you get that wacky scene uh, where uh, Corey Feldman, you know, his character basically hacks the crap out of, uh, out of Jason, essentially he dresses up, freaking shaves his damn head in the bathroom and whatnot. Um, it's pretty, pretty damn hilarious, dude. <laughs> and one of the, uh, one of those times where, you, like I said, see him unmasked and, uh, that continues. You see him pretty much unmasked at least one time in the film all the way up until part nine and then, or no, part eight, part eight's the last time you see him unmasked and then that's it. Um, until the remake, I think you kind of see him briefly unmasked there at the very end. And uh, as you can see, there is some blood on the machete, which should obviously be there, considering um, it's in the side of his damn head, right? <laughs> and Ted White, uh, another interesting kind of thing about this film, you know, Ted White had an interesting kind of relationship with, uh, with um, whatchamacallit, uh, Corey Feldman. From what I understand, you know, he didn't really like the kid. I don't know, at least based on kind of what he said in the documentaries. Um, so it's, he said that he's, he, it sounds like Corey Feldman was basically just a fucking brat and, a, and an annoying. So he used to enjoy kind of scaring the, uh, the Jesus out of him from what I understand. So that was, uh, kind of funny. I don't know. I mean, half, I mean, part of it's probably joking, you know, I'm sure Corey Feldman was kind of a bratty kid. Uh, he definitely seems like the type of kid that would be, uh, we'll say, uh, bratty and kind of a, a pain in the ass. <laughs> And he, from what I understand too, he wanted to kind of hang out with the older kids, which a lot of the time, you know, we, we, we do. I think when I was younger, man, you kind of wanted to be part of the group, man. And, and you're an actor, man. You know, everyone's leaving, having fun, heading out to the town and, and shit. And you got to basically go home and kind of be a kid still, you know, make sure you do schoolwork and all that fun shit. Um, but, you know, Corey Feldman struggled, though, later on in his life, though, man. You know, the Feld, the Corys, everyone knows about the Corys. Uh, their their narrative of their lives so far has been kind of wild, and that's a whole another story for another time. But anyway, so this is the uh, like I said, this is the machete head. Just wanted to show you guys that. I'm gonna try and back out a little bit, give you some more kind of perspective. So I'm sorry, this is shaking, but I don't have my damn stabilizer. It's freaking broken. So I'll try to do my best as far as. You know, not uh, shaking the shit out of this thing, but guys are going to have to bear with me for a little while while I try to, you know, get better at this. So, <laughs> or until I get my damn gimbal fixed. So, yeah, that's it, man, for that. And uh, what I'm going to do is close out with this guy and final thoughts and all that fun stuff. All right, guys, so that is it, man. We're going to close out the video and um, overall happy with the figure man um obviously again like i said you know stay tuned for the once customs version when i when i do get that that's going to be a treat because it's going to have a whole bunch of accessories you know just like this um possibly even more and it's going to be interesting to do a kind of comparison i'll probably do a review and a comparison all in one video so that may be a pretty long video <laughs> uh, but we'll see maybe i'll do it in two parts i don't know um you know most of the time i hear people say you know try to try to do it in uh, all in one shot as opposed to kind of breaking things up you know there's different philosophies on that uh, but again you know there's um, nuances to this figure you know Beto has his style uh, ones has his style and obviously you could you could you know nitpick on things um, obviously again based on your preference what you see in the film um, what they say is what perception is reality right uh, to, to, to an extent so um, you know uh, th that, that is true to an extent, you know, I, I'd have to agree with that. So, you know, people have different perceptions of how characters look and how they perceive them. So that's their reality. You know, I, I think this is a good piece. I think having both is definitely something that I want to have because I, I love both artists and, and it's two different looks, I think, that are going to be represented uh, from the film in their own accuracy. And, uh, and again, I think I probably mentioned this early in the review, you know, I hope people don't get skewed 
you know, by us, this because like myself and, and, uh, and uh, Galactables, you know, AKA Dan or Distress Labs or, or, or Paul over at Anomaly, you know, or, or I'm sorry, or Robert over at Anomaly, you know, you think we're gonna be biased, you know, or one-sided just because um, we're kind of the official reviewers for One's Customs. But, you know, obviously you guys see me reviewing uh, Beto Metalli pieces, you see me reviewing um, Cajun pieces, you see me reviewing all kinds of, of crazy shit. I review Sideshow, um, you, know I mean? you know what I mean? I, I, I mean, I don't do the mainstream stuff as much, but I, I did recently do Ghostface, and um, I think I was probably pretty uh, fair on that too. I, I've reviewed uh, other custom pieces too uh, by other artists, so you guys know that I'm, I'm pretty non-biased for the most part. Um, you would, I could definitely say I'm biased towards horror, <laughs> you know, for sure. So you can definitely expect some pretty honest reviews from myself, from Dan, um, from from Paul, or from uh, from Rob, you know, at their channels. And again, uh, Rob goes by Anomaly, uh, 682, I believe. And you got Dan over at Galactables, and um, you got myself here at I Am Toys, and then you got uh, you know Joe Bratton too as well over at SSG, um, Six Scale Grails, which he also has tons of videos um, up on his channel for you guys to look at and ones customs other pieces as well so definitely give them a shout so overall guys i think that's pretty much it i don't think i have anything else to say about this guy except for, you know stay tuned for that comparison video i'm um, at some point and other than that you know make sure you hit the like button please subscribe if you dig the content hit the dislike button if you do not like the video it's all right again like i said i, I always strive to be better or um, to irritate people um, more <laughs> Uh, but like I said, I think that's it guys. I don't think I'm forgetting anything. Um, and again, for the next videos, I uh, do have, I believe the prototype coming from Jason Goes to Hell from One's Customs. I do have a part four, like I said, come in as well. And there's that new part seven run that's gonna be coming out at some point. Uh, there's some other stuff on the horizon. And um, you know, tune into some other, our, our other crew, you know, their videos too, because there's better updates on there as well that they can give you. So, all right folks. Deuces.